Servus, Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. I read this morning two articles of two different mainstream media outlets that really sum up the state of Germany really well when it comes to how we deal with information about the pandemic of this year and also um, as it comes to, again, a topic that's very important on my channel, a recurring theme, selective enforcing of laws and rules. You should look up the keyword anarcho tyranny in that context. So, what is it about? In today's video, I will present to you these two articles and um, then you will see where this is going. First article, I will mention briefly what they are and then I will go into the specifics. So the first article says, it's from Der Spiegel, links down in the description below to both articles. First article says that the risk of the Chinese pandemic is much lower, way lower than people think. And surveys like these have been conducted in many countries, I think. And these are the results for Germany. And um, people were asked how um, yeah, severe or what percentage would you attribute to the risk yeah, that you will contract it and that it will be dangerous for you. And uh, that is completely unrealistic. Details later. And the second article is that in, the, um, in Bavaria, a... Um, police officer in his private time, in his off time as a private German citizen, spoke at one of those hygiene protests. Yeah, not the big one in Berlin, but a smaller one, I think. And he said that our mainstream media and our government are spreading fear and that leads to the fact that the people are misinformed about the real risk and that they're overestimating this risk. And as a consequence, this man, you know, he was filmed and um, he faces severe consequences now. Yeah? He might lose his job, he might be demoted, or yeah, um, he might lose his pension. Uh, severe consequences for this police officer who spoke as a German citizen in his free time. And in the light of the first article from Der Spiegel, it is clear, it is scientifically proven, you might say, by use of a survey, that uh, the, the psychological effect, that this fear um, that is spread throughout the media, that this is true. Yeah? It is out of proportion. It is the, the people think it's way more dangerous than it actually is based on the official numbers that some people don't even believe. But if you, for argument's sake, believe the official stats, the official numbers, the risk is minuscule. It's tiny. And what this police officer said is totally backed up by this survey. So he said, what, what he said is factually true. But nevertheless... He faces consequences now. And um, so in the end, I want to um, also put that into perspective as it comes to selective enforcing. But first, let's go into the details of these two articles. So the first one is that survey article. Um, Germans were asked, as I said, that um, uh, they should give a percentage. And I might add here that maybe all this... Uh, uh, survey does is show that um, Germans don't know anything about fractions and percentages. You know, <laughs> there are these similar surveys that are done about uh, wealth distribution. Like, what what do you think should be the wealth distribution of a fair society? What do you think is the actual wealth distribution? And 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 you know, these two answers are taken from a survey, and and and, and the participants have to give a percentage, a number in percentage of these wealth brackets that we have, like quintiles or whatever, and uh, then it is compared with the actual wealth um, or the estimation of the, as of the actual wealth distribution in Germany or the US or what whatever. And I think all that this um, proves is that people don't know anything about math. <laughs> but, you know, let's keep on with it. So people were asked, what is 
um, the risk for you in the next year, let's say, to contract this thing and it develops into a life-threatening situation for you. And the average is now 26%. That is the likelihood that the average German attributed to him or her contracting um, that China bug thing and it develops into a life-threatening situation uh, for that person. That's, this number is ridiculous. That's, a, that, that's you know, 26%. <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, and uh, so qualitatively at least, um, uh, the article says, um, it kind of makes qualitative sense what different people said so people who live together with more people uh, gave a bigger risk than people who live alone that makes sense people in uh, parts of germany where almost no infections occurred gave a lower risk than people who live in hotspots of course and also makes sense based on their experience right um, men systematically uh, estimate their risk to be lower than women which we all know women are always afraid of everything. They're very uh, concerned with risk and um, that's how they're genetically programmed, of course. And this is maladaptive in our um, nanny welfare states where there is no real risk and the actual risks that there are women systematically also underestimate, but that's a whole different complex of problems, right? Um, so qualitatively, when you compare different groups, it all makes sense. But systematically, throughout the bank, it's all way too high. So um, what the authors uh, then try to do is, you know, of course, we cannot give a clear number of what the actual risk will be. Who knows? But they would say, okay, if something like um, 2020 would repeat with those numbers again in 2021, let's say, and um, then you take into account how many people there are in Germany and how many people actually um, contracted that um, pathogen. And uh, and then for argument's sake, uh, this is a very uh, generous interpretation that everybody who was uh, tested positive would consider that as life-threatening, which is also, of course, not true, but for argument's sake, right? So that we don't underestimate anything here. And the result was 0.6% risk, okay? Versus 26. So that's, you know, yeah, two orders of magnitude, yeah? Two orders of magnitude, roughly, uh, an overestimation in people's minds, you know? In people's heads, it is, like, two orders of magnitude or um, yeah, more dangerous than it actually is. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, okay, so, and now this police officer, he said that while he was in, you know, he was giving a speech, yeah, as for these protests, there are, you know, sometimes celebrities, sometimes activists, sometimes just members of the public, or uh, some, yeah, ordinary citizens who want to say something about this and this is their right of course the problem is he introduced himself as a police officer and you know he shouldn't have done that even though it was in his off time in his free time he shouldn't have said that he works for the police because then the the interpretation goes now he kind of um gave his speech an official um like as if he spoke with uh, official uh, officer of the state authority here as a policeman, which he didn't. He spoke as a private citizen, but he made it sound like he spoke like a policeman. And that means now um, that he faces these severe consequences. Now, towards the end, I want to say that is selective enforcing of laws. Why? Well, very simply, because... I went to school in Germany and I know that what the teachers do there and most teachers in Germany, um, actually by far the most, are officers of the state, the public servants. They swear, in Bavaria at least, they have to swear an oath on the Bavarian constitution, you know, with their hand on the Bavarian constitution and all that stuff. So that means the same rules should apply. Now I can tell you that not only during their off time on the weekends or after hours, no, during class, during their service, they are saying the most vile things to these students, to these I impressionable young minds. They are actually uh, agitating there for sometimes communist causes. And of course, teachers tend to be more leftist 
police officers tend to be more conservative, of course, because they believe in law and order. Otherwise, they wouldn't become police officers. And if you believe in law and order, statistically, you fall more, or the probability that you fall onto the right of the political spectrum is high. Whereas teacher, education, you know, being brainwashed in these university courses that they take on, 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 on you know, becoming teachers, um, it is just very likely in Germany that you are a leftist. And that is selective enforcement because I have never heard that a teacher faced any real consequences for um, agitating for or, or, or arguing for communist ideas in front of students during math class or <laughs> during history class, right? When they should teach them math or history, instead they turn it into a Green Party, Communist Party um, um, r rally, yeah, where they try to, to convince the students that communism or um, yeah, welfare state and, and all these things are the way to go and, 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 and the nation and, and Germany, that's all evil, right? Which is totally opinion. That, that, and they don't face any consequences and it's even worse because they do it during their hours of service and not on the weekend. So this is absolutely insane. This is If that is not selective enforcing of rules, um, in this case rules for the conduct and behavior of public servants and their loyalty that they should have to the state. And by the way, I find it funny that they he criticized the media, the mainstream media, and that that would put him into hot water. So <laughs> they, they implicitly admit kind of that the mainstream media is seen as part of the state or part of the regime. A very, very funny little detail, I think. So now I presented to you these two articles and I put it into perspective. You know, first I proved to you that what this police officer said during his free time is perfectly backed up by, um, you know surveys so by empiricism it is actually true and um, then I put it into perspective by comparing it to the um, crazy crazy political agitation and uh, yeah campaigning that happens during um, instruction in German schools during school hours and they are also officers of the state, just the same as police officers. And they should be held to the same moral standards, the same code of conduct as it comes to, to or as it, um, you know, pertains to loyalty to the state. Yeah? And saying that um, you know, the, the government or the media or certain groups are uh, exaggerating the danger of that China uh, pandemic thing. Yeah, that, that is factually true. Okay, so let me know what you think about that. I think for the US and the UK and stuff, the numbers were pretty similar. Everyone overestimates that. I think um, I saw some video about that where this was already discussed, but I just found it funny that now even uh, police officers are, you know, threatened, intimidated if they say what is factually correct. And I think this is, of course, you know, punish one guy, educate millions, right? They want to make an example out of him so that they shut up. And um, yeah, that basically citizens in uniforms, you know, that, that is just a joke, right? They do not have the right to speak up uh, if they, you know, if they say something that's not in favor of our regime. But if you are a leftist teacher, you know, who preaches communism during physics class, that's fine. Go on. More power to you. All right. Let me know what you think about that, as I said, and take care. I'm enjoying that rainy day here. You can see the raindrops falling. I hope, um, yeah, that maybe uh, you have good weather, but maybe rain is good right now. I hear in Germany there is a drought um, I hope you guys get some rain soon there in the fatherland. <laughs> Take care. Servus, Kameraden.